welcome to Guilds of the North, your source for Guild Ball news in the Great White North. I'm Paul Filio. As always, I'm your host tonight, and here with me is uh, my buddies, Antoine Bergeron. Hello. And B. Steve. Hello. Uh, guys, how's it going? It's been, uh, been a little bit since we recorded something. Well, good. We, good. N- good. We recorded uh, two weeks ago about the 4.2 erratas with Bryce. Was it only two weeks ago? Yeah. Seems like longer. <laughs> uh, everything's a blur. It's summer. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, lots of stuff happening in Guild Ball in the uh, post-4.2 world. We've had a bunch of national championships. Uh, Steve, if you follow these things, why don't you talk about them? Uh, well, last weekend we had, uh, just after the uh, 4.2 errata, like you said, there was three nationals. We had the Swedish nationals that were won by, uh, I'm going to massacre that name, but it, uh, oh, Christoph Bialek, who won with the Masons. Uh, and the Western Canadian national was won by Riley Tremblay with orders. And the finals was order versus order. So I think there was four or five order player out of 24. So Canadian meta, I guess. I guess. And we were, so we have the confirmation that the East Canadian national was the biggest national still. Oh, really? West didn't get to... They were 24 in the end. What happened? Didn't they have more people than than East Canadian for signups? Uh, at one point, no, they weren't really sign up. I think they were intended of registration or something like oh, that. Like, like it's like Facebook uh, going to an event and then yeah, okay, yeah. So like this, these are were all the people that said they were going to, but in the end, they didn't register. I guess so. It it ended up with twenty four. Well, that's a pretty small event. Uh, yes. No, not no slight intended towards them. Uh, that's that's not what I meant at all. Um, just it's a slight drop. It's surprising, right? I, I expected them to do better than the East, uh, because I think last year they were more popular than the East, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that was that was disappointing. And then we had the uh, English nationals were won by uh, Michael Cumber with uh, Brewers. And all the... I hear that event uh, had a good swag bag. Yeah, they had, they had good price support. They had a Falconer team and a Ratcatcher team for each participant, plus some random models and stuff like that. And also, all the games are already on the Steamforge YouTube uh, channel. So you can watch all six games during the weekend. And Cook seems to be doing okay because one of the Cook players finish uh, five and one during the the weekend. Well, that's not too bad. Nope, not at all. Uh, the the sad part for him though, the is only lost is the game on stream. Oh. So it's going to be forever remembered. <laughs> well, that may also be the, the fact that the Cooks changed quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, people haven't played against them, so they don't know what to expect. So there's a lot of gacha factor, I think. Well, it's more like, oh, they do damage now because yeah, I, I think uh, the it's spice, right? That's the damage dealer. Yeah. Well, I played against them uh, this uh, last Wednesday at the gaming store during the gaming night, and I I was surprised, honestly. Like even Wellington, uh, he has slight damage buff as well, so his three is more accessible. And Rose has a bit more damage, and that stupid AOE doing five damage, the chili, uh, a chili, chili cookout. cookout. Yeah, it's a good thing it's not. Uh, it's only once per turn because wow, you, you kind of forget to like put your model further than three inches apart. So like most of the time you will hit two models. So that's four or five damage two models. Kind of brutal. Well, it sounds like me when I play against Antoine's butchers. <laughs> well, let's pack everyone in here and make it easy for Antoine. <laughs> and so that that's kind of the <clears throat> the f- impression or feedback we have so far from the uh, uh, big tournament post 
4.2. Okay. Still can't believe Brewers won English Nationals. How weird is that? Well, he played Corker all weekend. Uh, uh, Corker is really good. I don't think that's surprising. Yeah. So. Doesn't everyone play Corker all the time now? Is that kind of the way it is? I think so. I don't really know. I I assumed. From the uh, little bit of internet reading I do. But it might change with the new players that we're going to talk later on. Or not. Uh, not according <laughs> to the internet reading I've, I've done, yeah. Well, not according to my personal, uh, feeling. Yeah, well, let's, uh, we'll, we'll get there in a bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see, what do we, what do we talk about here? So we got a few things we have to cover. Um, I guess we should discuss the new resin models. The new quality of resin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am still uh, skeptical, but hopeful. All right, so let's talk about it. So we, um, as members of the quote-unquote media, we, uh, well, not exactly, that feels really noisy. Sorry, guys. Um, we got the option of requesting a, a sample model um, in exchange for reviewing the material and, and the model quality and stuff. So we all took advantage of that, and we all got a model. And I got Knuckles, of course, which we've uh, we've talked about, I think, previously. Yep. And you grabbed uh, Edge. No, Gaffer, and... but I bought oh, sorry, Edge. Gra- yeah, afterwards. sorry, you grabbed Gaffer, but you bought Edge in our order, yeah. yeah. And then um, Antoine uh, got Lane. Yes. So guys, why don't you uh, why don't you give your impressions? Because I think I already talked about Knuckles, didn't I? Yeah, Tick would talk about Knuckles and uh, Gaffer. And I didn't have Lane at that time when we uh, recorded. I think you mean Edge. Uh, Edge, sorry. Well, Edge, uh, it's really better. Unlike the miners, uh, uh, both swords are not really afraid they're going to break now. They might break at one point, but at least now they're going to hold. And even like she's a bit... um, uh, less bulkier than uh, Gaffer. Her, her ankles are more solid than any of the the miners that I have, and also uh, much. No, you say that like that's an achievement. Well, I mean, compared to yeah, like because miner all their ankles are really fragile. Like they have uh, old people ankles. <laughs> They have osteoporosis. Yeah, exactly. Had to uh, reinforce uh, shafts' uh, legs with me- metal rod. So, <laughs> well, I think I told you about the the guy I read who'd cut off shafts' legs and uh, replace them with space marine legs. Yes, you did. So I I won't be needing to do that with uh, with, Edge. with Edge. Yeah, okay. she's gonna be fine. Well, that's good to know. And that's the- good to know. And uh, there was um, there was less flash on Edge than I had on my Gaffer model as well, and there was no uh, mole slippage as well. So overall, casting ca- casting quality on Edge was a bit better than on the the Gaffer that I had received for my part. Yeah, I still think it was kind of odd that my knuckles was so cleanly cast, except for that one seam that ran right like the whole length of his body. Like, it just seemed really odd that the rest of the model was, like, perfect, except for that one C. Well, I've seen a couple of pictures, and you're not the only one with this, uh, the, like, big line on the side. Yeah. I think it's... Well, fit. I doubt it was only me. I didn't think it was something personal. You no. Know? Like, they didn't Steve do Ford's that. like, screw Paul. <laughs> they did that on Canadian. purpose just to bug you. Yeah. He's always down on us anyway. Exactly. So he's bad mouthing. So might I'm as like, well <laughs> make I'm sure like the he Canadian does it. Version of Phil, right? <laughs> and what about you, Antoine? Uh, Lane, uh, like I have, I don't have many of the risen models. I have three. So to give you a comparison, I have the old Philip from their original risen sets, and I have Corbelli. And Corbelli is a pretty big model. He has a pretty uh, 
like big pose. Both of his feet are on the ground. So it doesn't have the same uh, potential problems uh, that lane or flit can have. But while lane and flit both have a running pose, they only have one foot touching the ground. They both have flimsy blades. So I kind of compare it with the more uh, like the most recent risen problems, just f with the original ones. But the risen, I think, is a bit softer and it's more. Uh, I don't know if it's the right term in English, but pliable. Pliable is the exact right term. Okay, so like fillet blades, I've I think I've played with her once in. Uh, just assembled uh, state and pre-based her and I broke her knives three times either transit gaming or just sitting on my table and knocking something close to her and Lane seems is, normal yeah Lane is knife uh, kind of bends if I hit it or touch it instead of just breaking right off. So that's a big bonus for uh, small flimsy models like those two. Also, I fear a lot less that his ankle will break because of that same pliableness. While uh, I'm pretty sure Fillet will just snap eventually. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I keep waiting for the Yukai to break off at uh, the ankles. Yeah. yeah. On the model cleanliness, uh, I didn't have much flash. There was a small model line, nothing out of the ordinary. The model was pretty clean. One thing I would say is, I don't know if it's sculpting or clasting, but the details are a bit uh, more shallow than the original uh, resin. Like, Really? Okay, fillet, and fillet is a lot more crisp than Lane is. Lane is still a really good model. And he's pretty crisp. If I, if I compare him to any of the plastics I have, uh, it, it's far better. Wow. But, yeah, but. <laughs> but I don't know if it's the, their sculpting, the 3D sculpting, the, they're more shallow now, or if it's to prevent, uh, mold breakage. But I think the old, old resin was sharper. Or the old, old casting maybe was sharper. I don't know. I don't know at which stage there is a problem. I don't know if it's their prototyping to make the, the, the mold masters or whatever. I don't know at which stage it's happened. But I'm pretty sure she's a, she was sharper. I have both in my ends right now and uh, the, it, it's definitely a sharper in the old model than Lane was. But then Lane is, in fact. Would right you now. say Corbelli was sharper than Lane? I don't know. I don't have it in the end. I couldn't say for Corbelli. It's really fluid that I can compare it, because that's the two models I have on the, my table right in now. In front of you right now. Yeah. yeah. I thought maybe you had Corbelli nearby. No, he's in the bag. <laughs> uh, well, of course he is. It's not like Philip would be in the bag, right? Well, she's on the painting table, that's why. Well, we're going to get some variety. You're going to stop crushing me with... Uh, Ox? With Ox? Yeah, he's yep. going to crush you with Phyllis now. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Actually, well, does that, that makes me even look even worse, doesn't it? Hmm. Why don't it remains you talk to be seen if I can crush with her. Like, uh, we'll see. And that's the segue for you talking about the your field experience with Lane because and when the first time we talk about the first models we only talk about Gaffer and uh, Knuckles and because we didn't have uh, time to play with Edge and Lane but now you have time to play with Lane and I had a bit of time to play a couple of games with Edge as well so mm -hmm. do you want to talk about your experience from your viewpoint or we let Paul uh, cry and sub Talking about that game. Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, it wasn't that bad. I mean, no. I, I clocked myself. But, um, yeah, the, but, the final score uh, was like 12, 12 to, to 8. 8, 6 or 8? Eight, yeah. eight. 8. So it wasn't that uh, that yeah, bad. it wasn't that bad. And that was after 
I can't believe I managed to to recover from my stupidity of piling up and going. Oh yeah, that's right, the ox aura. Oh yeah, that's a bad idea. Oh yeah, this is this is a terrible way to play. <laughs> no, uh, lane itself uh, was fun. Having the uh, dodge on himself, eh, not having to either do a pass or having veteran brisket to generate uh, a movement outside of the character himself. Oh, with good. the ox aura? No, just having uh, aura, yeah, Sure, having ox also helped mm. uh, because uh, I think most of two of the three times I activated him, it was in in the bubble to get the um, free acrobatic. Okay. But I think in the last turn, I paid for it and it it mattered anyway. So I think that plus two was good. If I compare him to Brisket, because uh, I don't think I played more than one or two games without Briskets in my uh, butchery turn. So she's the, the model I will compare him to. Uh Having close control was clutch too. Uh, in her case, uh, probably that, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the ability name, but the, the one where you move away if you're engaged. Unpredictable movement. Yeah, unpredictable movement could have had a similar effect maybe once, but not both times because Paul had two inch melee auras, uh, two inch melee characters attacking lane, so. I think it's a it's a tie on usefulness. Like they both work, they they just won't work with this against the same characters. Uh, however, the the one damage dodge tackle <laughs> on the first column bullshit. Was yeah. really <laughs> oh, it's right, family friendly <laughs> language. Really good. <laughs> uh, I think it's a good balancing act that is uh, double dodge is a lot higher. He, he would be too strong if the double dodge was lower. Because like that, he cannot easily uh, get out of a uh, two-inch melee uh, character or uh, aura and just move away. Because if you're playing him with Ox and he's in the bubble, Arachor Basics would uh, have been used before and you don't have it again to, to pay and go outside of an engagement. Or you need to take it, in, 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 like, consider it in your calculation and uh, your influence usage. But uh, I had fun with him. He he did one shot on goal with six dice. <laughs> that, that activation, he did nine damage and scored a goal. Because it was the... Uh, Feet turn, the or feet, legendary well, turn. Yeah, the legendary turn. So he attacked twi- uh, three times, hit the first column three times, so did the three damage, three inches of dodge, and uh, finally shot on goal after killing somebody for a big uh, six, uh, six point. Nice. And did you manage so, to get the tackle-tackle result on the close control model, or...? I never had to. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a close control model. No, either uh, he already had the ball from a pass, and after that, the ball was f- too far for me to try to get to anyway. So, yeah, I was playing Union, so no, uh, no close control model that I can think of. Yeah. So it was something. fun. I-, I need to play him again. I-, I played with Ox, so I only took one striker. I only took him. Uh, I really want to try a. a- a scoring fillet team, so I'm painting him. Uh, for now, it's going to be him and base brisket, but I probably want to uh, get veteran brisket painted too soon. Uh, by him, you mean fillet? No, uh, uh, Lane. Lane. Oh, isn't he already painted, or was he not completely painted? When no, I he's painted, but uh, I'm painting fillet to to play my the like I I'm aiming for fillet, Lane, and one of the brisket. As my striker right. trio, but and right Shank. now, well, Shank is a is a, is a winger, is support. Yeah, <laughs> well, he's still like really uh, uh, fast with. Yeah, uh, he has the speed. He doesn't yeah, have the kick, but he has yeah. the speed. So, uh, is there more for utility and uh, getting the ball early, something like that? So it's those four model, and after that, 
Uh, I don't know which other model will join it. Like, if I pick Boiler for the charge range, it's gonna be Boiler and Princess. But if not the pig and Veteran Ox, uh, I have no idea. Uh, no one plays the pig. Vet Ox might be a good idea. Uh, I don't mind playing the pig. <laughs> or you could add the cinnamon as well for the extended uh, reach. No, I can't. I don't have her. Hmm. So, I like the model, but uh, I don't want to buy the crooks box just for her. So, whatever. You'd also get uh, roast. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like the model. So, well, come on, just because his armbands are bigger than most people's torsos. <laughs> exactly. Sure, but still, yeah. No. <laughs> no, you're not a good seller, Paul. Well, I would not have bought the cooks, but they were given to me. Mm-hmm. So to which I am very grateful. It was, a, it was a very nice gesture. Someday they'll get painted, and they may even see a table. Ooh. Probably won't be me playing them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Steve uh, has mentioned interest in wanting to play them. So yeah, well, uh, I have uh, interest in playing everything. So. Yeah, I enjoy Lane to to close it. I don't think is the best model in Guild, especially at, in Butchers because. Like I, I play, really I, I try to score goal with my butchers, but I think that's not the the case for most of the butchers players. So, well, I don't think that's the design intent, right? I oh no, I I know it's not the design intent, but that's like I, I chose a guild based purely on uh, look when I got them, not on play style, <laughs> and I still like the look, so. I'll that's still kind of try it's, to it's, make a score goal with them. It's not an Antoine playstyle, usually. Nope. <laughs> well, then again, you play trolls. Trolls are kind of run into your face and beat you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Steve, do you have anything to add on uh, your Edge play experience? Uh, I tried Edge model experience? Yeah, I played a couple of games with her. Uh, I tried her with uh, her sister first, uh, Skeda, and it was okay. But, uh, and then after I tried her with uh, Steelja, and it was much better because of all the traps. So it was easier to have snare all over the place. And because of her um, ability, she can jump, uh, to, well, not jump, but dodge two inches uh on her uh on every play when she attacks so she was really mobile uh like doing a tackle triple dodge on the first column on the snare model is pretty good to try to retrieve the ball well, that seems okay and i was able also to do the two damage momentous entangle which means she was able to attack a snare model do two damage to him then put snare on another model and then double dodge onto that model as well. And then continue to attack. What's the uh, fair and balanced, I believe, is what you like to say? Well, she she did score a, a goal in every game I used her, but then she did die horribly every time after that goal. Because she just, like, look at her and she dies uh, at Def four zero armor with thirteen uh, health. I mean, almost anybody can kill her in one activation. Right, but I don't think that's abnormal for a lot of goal scoring models. Right, they're kind of usually when you score a goal, you're kind of out there, and that's yeah. exactly the uh, stats from lane two. So, <laughs> so I'm trading four points for two points, but uh, uh, usually you're okay with that. I mean, how many times have I sent Shark up to score? Only to have him get horribly abused afterwards. Well, at, le at least Shark, once per game, you can save him with his legendary and then d dodge back. Not if you miss that goal. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can sing, Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. Why? <laughs> well, your kids don't listen to that. Yeah, but why would you <laughs> sing that? Because, yeah, I... because Not everyone <laughs> sings everything, Steve. Sorry. <laughs> After playing Shark. No, Steve. Shush. <laughs> no singing. No singing. Bad Steve. 
<laughs> so I I really like Edge and she's gonna be in the twelve when I play hunters uh, every time, and most of the time she's gonna be in the six as well. Because I because uh, with her and Egret you get two models with close control in hunter, so it's pretty fun. Going from no bottle, no way to protect the ball except from Zerola with her unpredictable movement and death five to two models with close control. So that's pretty fun. Yeah, for you, maybe. <laughs> uh, close control is really good as well for taking parking blows against models that don't have uh, knockdown, too. So, okay. You just like walk out of the melee zone and, okay, do a tackle and. I can go and score anyway because of close control. I'm not used to that in my teams. Yay! <laughs> Steve being abusive. Yay! <laughs> well, I can't play my hunters anymore on gaming nights, so it's all fine. Well, it's only because everyone hates playing against you. <laughs> it's against hunters, I guess. People are tired sure. of traps. Whatever you need to tell yourself, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. It's okay. Uh, that's why I killed the conversation there. Um, is that it? Are we on to the, uh, the new the, stuff? Yeah, there were more release. Actually, the last batch of uh, free city draft models uh, were revealed this week. Uh, so, uh, we have, uh, Cami for Alchemist, Flea for the, well, uh, Brewers, sorry, Nomad for Engineers, and Champ for Masons. Before we move on to them, uh, yeah. we should probably, uh, put in the show notes, maybe, uh, pictures of the uh, first series of, uh, Prestige Graph models we have. Like you Ed. painted both yours, Knuckle is painted and uh, Edge is painted, right? No, Edge is not painted. Gaffer is no. painted. Gaffer. So at, you have at least one of them yeah. painted. So, yeah, as do I. I've got Knuckles painted. Yeah. So we'll, we'll put uh, links in the show notes for that, for people to see maybe uh, the quality of the model oh, uh, outside. I took pictures of the uh, Bear Risen model too. For yeah, I did that with Gaffer as well. I have uh, like a couple of pictures before assembling, pictures assemble and painting process as well. So yeah, I did the I, same. I got uh, some pictures of um, him from priming forward. I think yeah. I didn't take pictures of bare resin because I'm like, well, it doesn't really show up well. And yeah, I figured there'd be tons of pictures of them online anyway. So. Yeah, uh, I forgot to take it after priming, but I should because that the bear resin isn't that good of a, a show for those models, especially yeah. for your Steve Gaffer being. Yeah, black, well, I have a, I have prime uh, pictures. Okay, at least. <laughs> yeah. What's up with Gaffer? What makes Gaffer extra bad? I must have well, something. Well, it's black resin. Oh, yeah, of course. So, it kind of doesn't. Uh, it doesn't show really anything. Real. It's just a black blob, and we can make. Yeah, a, I hadn't uh, hadn't thought about that. <laughs> and we can make a an album as well on the Facebook uh, Geeks of the North page as well. Yep. For yep, further sure. reference. Yep. We'll, we'll find point. a way to get that uh, out and available. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to bring my model by. I think to have you take some pictures because I don't have any really good painted pictures of it. And I don't know where my folio is or any of my picture-taking stuff, mm -hmm. since I never, ever photograph my miniatures. Oh, mine's are just picture-taken on the Citadel painting stand, and all in with a white envelope as background, and that's it. Only Antoine takes real professional pictures. Now, I find my stuff looks terrible in pictures, so that's why I don't usually... Like, I find it looks much better in real life than, uh, than in pictures, but maybe that's just me. Oh, uh, uh, it's the same for me as well. I don't like seeing them in picture because I see all the the mistakes I made and stuff like that. So it, I find it shows more in picture than uh, when you have the 
the model in real life. It does. I totally agree with you there. But for reference uh, purposes and for our listener, I'll post a picture of my model. There you go. Sacrificing myself for our listeners. <laughs> for the greater good. <laughs> for the greater good, <laughs> exactly. So now Speaking... that I'm painting Philip, I realized that there was a separate piece on her. And I have to find that. Oh. Oh, well, it was kind of her, on her belt or something like that? Yeah, something like that. I, I, I see now two holes near the belt that don't make sense otherwise. And I kind of remember like extra knives and the, like on a belt, a loose belt or something. So. Well, it's a Steamforge module, so it's probably pouches of some stuff. Some sort. Yeah, I think Steamforge uh, took lessons from Rob Layfield for yeah, uh, character design. Butchers don't have pouches. They oh, just un- have thousands of belts oh. and knives. They have oh, knives sorry. everywhere. Miners, I think every model have at least five pouches on them on their belt. At least. I think only Mule or and Fissur doesn't that, don't have them. But probably Fissur, they're all hidden in their tank. <laughs> Uh, butchers are yeah. like I have Meetook right here, and she has six weapons on her, like just in case. Just in case, Lane has five. Philip r- right now only has two, but the extra ones are pretty all on the belt. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to find out. Yeah, sorry for that sound earlier. Um, I'm a I'm a brush licker, right? And I wasn't paying attention, and I was painting with the. Uh, Tamiya Clear Red. Oh. And uh, Tamiya Clear Red is not water-based. No, it doesn't taste good, right? Oh, God, no. But it smells <clears throat> good. It smells like cherry. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't taste like cherry. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know. I made that mistake once as well. It's, re- it's really bad. Only once. <laughs> I'm hoping I will never make that mistake again. <laughs> Hopefully for you. So can we go with the new release uh, model this week? Yeah, go, Steve. You're up. <laughs> I'm up. Well, you can't come in as well. I'm not... No, no, you're <laughs> up. <laughs> it's going to be a Steve monologue until the end of the episode. <laughs> well, we all know no one really cares what we say because uh, we are not tournament-minded and or competitive-minded. Um, and what was it, the resume you, you uh, the was, summary you mentioned? Like you were mentioned in the summary, but you were the only guy mentioned. <laughs> so it was the uh, it was on Discord earlier this week. It was Mike Klein doing a, like a one line of what every uh, Gilball Ever. podcast will say about the models. Yeah, Steve. Steve will say something in his cute French accent or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, some will listen, but not many. Yep, that's <laughs> that's pretty much that's us. our podcast. Yeah. But what was funny about that whole description was that he made fun of the, like, five random episodes of hobby stuff and then the Guild Ball thing. But the, the, fun, the funny thing is that the Guild Ball stuff is actually the secondary stuff for us. It's supposed to be the random hobby stuff is the main topic. <laughs> <laughs> we, but the, the Guild podcast doesn't have his own uh, RSS feed, so it's kind of a piggyback on the on the other show. That's right. So, the first one, the girl wielding model. It's Cammy. Uh, she plays Wait, for what? Sorry, what did you describe her as? Girl, girl wielding, uh, gun wielding model. Okay, you said yeah, girl you said wielding girl. model. Oh, sorry. So I was like, what the gun. hell is he talking she has, about? She has two guns. Yes, she is John Woo styling. Yeah. And even though she has two guns, she doesn't have a single damage on her playbook. <laughs> and that's a first for a uh, guild ball. She's, she's American, Steve. Guns don't hurt people. <laughs> oh, people yeah. hurt people. Oh, true. <laughs> so, uh, similar to, uh, other, uh, free CD draft models, she's a, oh, oh, I thought she was a winger. She's a attacking midfielder, but with, um, with no, with no with, damage. With no damage and with a striker playbook and tack and a striker, uh, movement as well and defense. Wasn't so. the first city draft 
goal was to have somebody from eight different positions? Yeah, exactly. Every uh, there's a, a model for for each position. Yeah, okay. So that's why. Like uh, uh, Edge is a winger, but she's really a striker. So. <laughs> well, seriously, she has a striker stats as well. Oh, I, I know. So. I know. So Kemi is a striker. That's not a striker as well. Um, so her playbook is all about dodges, and she has a tackle on uh, on the first column. And on the fourth column, she has a guilt ball play. Which is a chemical ordinance, so it's six inch range to reflect her gun. So she just, she does one damage, condition damage, and put either poison or burning on the target. So she's like the other alchemist now that she plays with the, um, condition a lot with, well, act, poison and burning condition. But also, uh, every time she makes a successful attack, she may do her gill ball play as an additional result. So if you do tackle, you can do tackle and one damage and put fire on somebody within six inches. And she has a um, teleport mechanism called Elusive. So once per turn during her activation, she may remove the burning or poison condition from another model within four inches. And if she does that, she's in base contact with that model. So she can move really up uh, to the field to score but it's nice because it's other model it's not other f uh, enemy model so she could remove it from one of your model as well to uh, right so to it's go got more flexibility yeah exactly so she can do some lat lateral move as well and everything and she also has an at an anatomical precision so I think she's pretty good to retrieve the ball and she has lots of uh, non-linear movement so anatomical on a model that has no damage? Well, it's two helper uh, against like a four one model. Yeah. So she, if she charged, she has. Yeah, a, no, I, a I understand that. Wrap. I, I understand what it does. Like, I'm not that retarded at the game, but I just find it funny that they give her anatomical but no damage. It's yeah. kind of ironic, I think. Just like Alanis Morissette said. I was not going to quote Alanis Morissette. But you were waiting because, for me to do it. Well, yeah. But, <laughs> but the thing is, I wouldn't quote Alanis Morissette what I said because I I was actually being ironic uh, <laughs> as opposed to what that song is, which is not ironic ever because she doesn't know what the word means. <laughs> um, Carry on, Steve. <laughs> Next one is, the, is Flea, which was uh, revealed... Uh, during a session of a small session of Q&A or something like that at the English National. So, um, he... Also, oh, people took pictures of the, of the, uh, the screen, right? Yeah, exactly. It was posted everywhere. Uh, Flea was the last model to be chosen in the Free City draft and he ended up in the Brewers. And uh, the model looks good. He has a, a uh, dog on his base, but the dog is purely aesthetic. Doesn't do anything. Unlike Honor, who has her dog on her base, but it, she has an ability to uh, protect her with the dog. Um, just, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that Honor has. I've, an, I've never seen anyone play that Honor, so. No, I know, but. Yeah. The, I didn't know the, the dog actually did something. I thought it was just a cosmetic thing. No, Flea Dog is a cosmetic thing, which is sad. Because he has a character play, go get it. And it's basically a Red Fury for Masca. And also, uh, he could have, uh, he could have had an ability like called fetch or something like that. And the dog could retrieve a free ball on the pitch for either character play or something like that. So it would have mattered that the dog was on the base. Um, but now you're wishlisting, right? Cause... I know, but he doesn't that, he doesn't have that at all. Uh, he has well, only it a... It might be his heroically animal threat. That, that could be theorized that his dog is attacking with the, with the mascot. Maybe. Steve uh, doesn't seem convinced. No. Well... You could, yeah, you could do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has, um, uh, tech four with the uh, Brewer's playbook, so, uh, three column uh, long. 
and his damage is not momentous. He has a one and a two on the uh, first two column, and he has a knockdown and lots of pushes on all the other results. So he can shove people closer to the mascot, I guess. Um, he has assists with both Brewer's mascot, and he also has a get over here for uh, a dodge of the mascot uh, towards him as well. Just like Fright as with scum and also he has a heroic play which gives uh, one of the mascot within 4 inches plus 2 attack so, can't he hit stupid damage numbers with scum well scum scum in could, theory yeah scum in theory could go to uh, with command with commanding aura and plus 2 attack uh, he could get it on a, up to 7 attack with a 3 long playbook so and he could get three attacks from himself plus, uh, I guess four more, uh, from Flea if you want. So in total could get seven attacks. So with all the wraps and assists and everything, uh, Scum could deal that as much as damage as, uh, other squaddy, but that's a lot of setup and investment when you could like just do it with, uh, Hooper. Well, yeah, but but which one is it more fun with? Well, for just fun, saying. yeah, I mean, sure, it's it's more fun with the the cat of death. You know, the fluff bunny in me uh, demands <laughs> that you set up that cat. Yeah, of course. And I, I think, like, uh, with assists and the damage, uh, with the assists from the mascot. And as well, if you want commanding aura, I guess Flea could push a model for a long way. Like he could have six stacks and wrapping and wrapping. So he could have fun and pushing, uh, shove people around and push them off the board. But I, I think he's going to have a hard time getting uh, field present. Field time? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be there on the side with his little dog whistle and encouraging the other mascot and the go, go, go. <laughs> That's my poor flea imitation. So you just don't think, you just don't think Brewers are going to play him? I, I don't think so. And especially since, uh, like Dapper and Stoker just got rework and are now really more uh, playable. Um, I think it's just, it's just not interesting enough. Huh? I, there's so many better uh, squatty and brewers that are more staple and more useful than him that I have a hard time seeing him and making its way to the six. In a tournament area, mind you. Not in, like, Wednesday night gaming at the Abyss, but in a tournament environment. Uh, I have my reserve. Uh, next one is Nomad. So he's a, oh, he's a winger as well. Just like, uh, Edge. Um, he's a engineer. He has a, a playbook that looks like, uh, other engineers. So he has a one damage on the first column, momentous two on the third, and a non momentous three at the end. He has stack five, and he has, a Lots of, uh, he has a tackle on the first column and after that he has pushes and, uh, a double dodge. Uh, but, but does the, he really have tack five, Steve? Well, basic tack five. He can get a bit more than that. He also has a character play, which, uh, does two damage and minus one armor. So it's pretty nice because I think it's the, <coughs> the first time that the engineer has some, have something to, uh, reduce armor, so it can help them a bit against uh, some uh, more armored model like uh, Masons and Blacksmith. Uh, mm -hmm. But on the back of his card, I think he gets the record for the most uh, text on the back of a card. There's not, mu that, there's not yeah, there's... much space there. <laughs> exactly. Um, he has Goal of the Month, which is the same thing as uh, Season Brisket. So he can make a screamer on any double when he scores, if he scores. He has a, another ability. It's called a roulette. So it's similar to, um, uh, sorry, 
alloy in uh, blacksmith where you get to choose uh, an effect but the effect lasts uh, until un only until his activation so it, unlike uh, alloy which is uh, until the end of the turn so you can either give him plus one plus one move plus one attack or plus zero plus two kick so that plus one attack is pretty interesting because combined with uh, Rivet means he's plus two attack. So suddenly your attack five model is attack seven with a five long playbook, which is kind of pretty good. Kind of, eh? Yeah, kind of. And uh, especially with uh, Rivet, you can give him two inch melee as well. And if you really want to go for the total combo or ultimate combo, whatever, you could put elbow grease on him where his, all his damage is now momentous damage. So with seven tack, with a, a bit of setup or assist, uh, it's pretty easy to, uh, to wrap. So that three damage, which is now momentous three plus that one for the wrap becomes it one momentous, so you can do four damage and two momentum with every attack. So he can do be... me a favor. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Finish what you're saying. Okay. He can be. Well, he he can do some uh, easy. Um, well, not easy, but he can do some takeout. And but also, uh, if you put plus two inches of kick on him, he can go to four eight kick, and he can score as well if you want. Yeah, 4 8 kick uh, yeah. puts him right up there with some of the yeah. best strikers in the game, right? Yeah. Es especially if you take, if you're, you know, lucky with the legendary and stuff. Yeah, well, also. Some crazy movement shenanigans. Yeah, he has another ability to fill up the back of this card is unpredictable movement. Again, combined with uh, Rivet, which gives him two inches of uh, melee, means uh, he's pretty much immune to uh, all. Uh, all one inch uh, melee model, so it's pretty awesome to to keep the ball. If you need something else, then uh, Colossus with close control to to keep the ball. And he also has a legendary play, which is called "Wherever I May Roam." And no, I won't sing the Metallica song. Uh, you choose a piece of terrain within four inches of uh, him. And he can be placed uh, in base contact with that terrain piece. Yeah. Uh, That's no going to make people very angry. Well, knowing <laughs> that like rough ground and forest can be as much as six inches uh, wide. I mean, no one plays with those. No, I know. Usually Except it's... for us, maybe. <laughs> uh, but usually it's like more around three or four inches. But still... Plus, uh, it's this means under his legendary return, he can get seven inches of move. So, plus, Seems all right, yeah, seven inches of move plus a sprint of eight plus a kick of eight gives you a pretty much uh, guaranteed goal. Well, not guaranteed goal because nothing is guaranteed this, in this game, but it well, gives he you uses dice, right? So, yeah, exactly, but it gives you a really nice long goal run. I think he, okay. he he's gonna. Unlike Flea, he's going to be used a lot and seen a lot in Engineer. Especially with yeah, uh, think, uh, Rivet. With Rivet. 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 <laughs> Rivet. I, I love the way you, you I, uh, I, emphasize I really, that. Yeah, I, I tend to French, uh, French it. <laughs> French as I, French it. Well, anyway. French it, size. Yeah. That, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> with Rivet. Oh. Ouh là là, appelé River. <laughs> Avec le nomade. <laughs> ouais. Uh, and, um, Antoine, since you play, uh, Mason, do you want to talk about, uh, Champ? No, have a go. I'll just come in. <laughs> so, uh, Champ. It's the Steve show. <laughs> exactly. Steve monologue. So, uh, yeah, he's, a. Uh, Pretty standard uh, Mason with uh, three two armors, uh, fairly uh, average move with five seven, and he's a three six. She uh, oh, she she. Uh, sorry sorry. She's a three six kick. Sorry, 
Uh, our playbook is uh, Mason's playbook. So our first column of momentous, and after that, it's uh, non momentous. But uh, our playbook is is really about uh, lots of movement because she has lots of uh, push dodge. Like her second, her fourth, and her fifth column are all uh, all include push dodge. So she can drag you to gain additional movement to uh, to get the the goal. Uh, she has a new character trait to the game. Uh, it's called Old the Ball. So a uh, friendly model, target friendly model within four inches, gain uh, close control. I think that's really kind of awesome and silly at the same time. Yeah, but... It, I'm not saying it's super useful. But, well, it could be useful. In, in on sense, her. I don't think it's super broken or anything, but... But I... Uh, Corbelli has already close control. Flint already has con- close control in this guild, so it's less necessary than in other guilds, I find. But she could give it to her, or maybe um, honor, harmony, or harmony for uh, if they want to do gold run. Yep. But harmony with five, does she still get the five one against with brick or? Yep. So a five one model with close control. Is pretty nasty to try to pretty get much unkillable. To well, it's pretty hard to get the ball back from that model yeah. unless you have special ability. And on her back of her card, she has a new ability. She's it's called "Put Me Back In, Coach." So once per turn, if uh, she suffers taken out, she can be re- she uh, is removed, but she can come back. Um, Right now, right yeah. as if it was the maintenance phase. Well, it's nice. That seems pretty good. Well, it's pretty nice because if you put influence on her and she dies, well, she can still be relevant during the turn. So yeah. you can always safely put influence on her, and she, she's, she, she has a shot at at being relevant. And well, that's good too, because I mean, she's not that really fast. Her. At uh, five jug, Seven, five inches yeah. jug, but when you combine that with uh, one of her other threat uh, stamina, yeah. which gives her a free jug at the start of her activation, it starts to let her kind of go wherever she wants. Like she does a five inch jug coming back in the eight immediately. Then when you activate her, she does another five inch jug, and then she do her activation. Yeah. So she can get to anywhere within fifteen, inch. nineteen inches. Oh yeah, well of the board because there's her base yeah. size, two times five, and maybe uh, an eight inches charge. So she can affect anything within twenty inches of any board edge. And also, often enough, there's a, a fast ground as well on the side because it needs to be close to the edge of the board. Yeah. yeah. So if she can take advantage of that, it's pretty good as well. And also she has a poise to kind of protect herself. Mm-hmm. So she has a free counter attack. Cherry on top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just to be sure she's efficient. Yeah, we we wouldn't want her to be inefficient now. No, we wouldn't want her because we already have flea in that batch. So there's only one model per batch. I, I, j- I don't find her bad. <laughs> But I'm not sure I see where she will Where play. she fits. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say I like the model. Yeah, that, that I totally agree. I, I love the, the pugilist-looking model. I don't know what, what guild do you think she was really designed for originally? Do you think she was like a, a, a brewer? Because, like, I, I, you know, all the models, they had a preconception as to where they, yes. where they kind of fit, right? Where do you think she was intended to be originally? I'm pretty sure it wasn't Mason's. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you mentioned before we started recording, she kind of have the same, uh, uh, yeah, f- similar uh, appearance to which one was it, uh, Cinder uh, or Ferris? Ferris and Cinder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I guess she would fit there too. Yeah. Or that might just be their, um, the, her nation. I, I don't know if they are Castilian too. So uh, it okay. might just be uh, like a, a Castilian thing. Yeah, a Castilian thing. The look. 
Yeah, because uh, the art is very similar, right? Yeah. But yeah, Fair. yeah. when you mentioned the Pugilist team, she kind of fits uh, Brewers, but didn't Ember come from Brewers too? Yeah. But I think Ember was already excommunicated from the Brewers and the Fluff before. Yeah, yeah, she was. So, but... so presumably she wasn't going back there, right? But Ember is certainly a, a Brewer-type name. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. And Champ is sure enough that she could fit anywhere. Yeah. This is true. And that's it for the free city draft models that were chosen by the community last year. Yeah, I wonder what's next. Like, where does Team Forge go from here, do you figure? Oh, we don't know anything, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do another uh, community event. Because the engagement is good from the last uh, two years, I think. Like, people are reporting games and everything, and there was lots of uh, um, back shenanigan between, like, people in the Facebook group trying to unite or not, again, uh, to get uh, it was cert- It was really interesting. So it was fun because the community was involved, and they were talking about it, the, the models and the guild and stuff like that, so... And locally, it was fun, like, to have a purpose, kind of a purpose to play during your in-between tournament game and stuff like that. So, and they, uh, for those models, they had uh, lots of fluff develop over them. Like, uh, Sherwin, their uh, main fluff guy, he did a couple of uh, weekly uh, uh, story with all the rookie camp was evolving and then small uh, text blurb presentation about each model. And after that, once they were chosen for uh, every guild, we had a, another page or two of fluff for each model. So it was pretty fun for that. Did any of them die before release? No. Sherwin's sure losing his touch? I guess. Well, Lane could have OD'd, but he didn't. Oh, right, right. There was nearly a death. I forgot about yeah. that. But no, nobody died. Well, he made it up in the season four fluff. Where everyone died. <laughs> a lot of people died in that fluff. What was the body count? There was uh, Obulus and Mist. Who else died? Um, uh, well, uh, Scum. Oh, right, Scum. Oh, yeah, a bunch of the brewers. A couple of brewers right. have died. Stoker died as well. Uh, yeah, Stoker and Mash. Yeah. <laughs> all, t- all to the ends of the rat catchers. So, uh, I think brewers got the, the, uh. Yeah, they, they the, got the, uh, the poopy end of the stick for sure. Well, and because there's no union anymore, so. Yeah, they already <laughs> killed them off the previous season, so. Those uh, and the other one are disbanded in the other guilds, so the only one left is uh, greed on uh, riding the turtle. I wonder what they're going to do with that model. I don't know. It should be funny. Yes, because that's what Union's all about, being funny. <laughs> well, <laughs> Union is about Gone. trying yeah, to I know, exist. I know. I know. Oh, my bet he's going to be a, he's going to have a moment the three on three. <laughs> the the turtle? Book, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but with the three speeds, we won't be relevant. Exactly. <laughs> with a two inch melee with his uh, long. Uh, his lance? Uh, yeah, his yeah. lance, Don Quixote style. Uh, so, oh. I think that covers what we had to talk about Guild Ball and new release and new stuff uh, that we, we were presented uh, recently. Yeah, I think we powered all through it. Good job, Steve. Thank you. I'm thirsty. I will need some water. Uh, or some liquid English. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bed soon, so... Uh, well, liquid English helps you sleep, Steve. <laughs> I don't need liquid English to sleep. I just go to bed and 30 seconds after, I'm sleeping. Oh, how I envy you. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I can lie down. 30 seconds later, I'm asleep. 15 minutes after that, my kids are screaming for me. <laughs> so that's, that's how it usually works. Yeah. Do you have any uh, shout out to close the episode? Uh, no, I got nothing. But uh, there's something in the doc that you put there. Go yeah. Steve. Well, there's. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we have. Uh... <laughs> Let's make Steve do the whole episode while I'm putting ice here and paint other stuff. Mm. Um. So uh, yeah, upcoming we have uh, 
Warzone on September 7th. Uh, I don't know how their Guild Ball event's selling. Do you know, Steve? Uh, so far, not that good. Uh, really? uh, well, there's lots of people saying, oh, yes, I'm going, I'm going, and I'm going, but nobody really registered yet, so... Ah, oh, they're, they're I, West Canadian nationaling it. Yeah, so I encourage people who say they're gonna go, like they told me where I'm gonna go, please register, so uh, there's a tournament going, because I don't know, uh, like if there's no registration they have, I don't think there's, or close to the event, I don't think uh, the event is gonna be... Uh, are you are you toing that? Yeah, I'm I'm doing the I'm toing and I'm gonna play if there's a buy, but uh, I'm gonna be the judge and yeah. and rule master. Oh, and, okay and, then. And Warzone is well, there the Guild Ball tournament is at the Warzone gaming convention. At, right. Uh, and where's that being held? Do you know? It's uh, it's a uh, high school. Uh, Gérald Fillion, c'est ça? Something like that. Yeah. On uh, in Longueuil, on the south shore of Montreal, it's right next to the Jacques-Cartier Bridge when you exit Montreal. For those who are local, yeah, it's G- Gerard Filion, uh High School in Longueuil, September sixth, seventh, and eighth. Um, and you said the Guild Ball event is on the seventh. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So wait, sixth and eighth. So there's stuff on the Friday. I think there's some uh, 40k and AOS doubles on the Friday, and then on the weekend there's a 40k championship. I think there are up to f- close to 50 registration for the 40k. Wow. Yep. Yeah, and there's a War Machine event as well, and and there's a Infinity tournament. I think Infinity is around 16 registered so far for that That's event. That's interesting. Yeah. No yeah, it's run by uh, Nick. Okay. Nick DeGuise. Yep. Who we saw last week. Yep. Yeah, I'm guessing Guild Ball's, is not, Guild Ball's on sale, even. The tickets are reduced in price. Well, they're all reduced in price. Oh, you're you're right. Okay, hold on. So, um, this makes excellent radio as I try to figure this out. <laughs> so, you have to buy the day pass and the event pass, correct? Uh, No, I think you just buy the... Uh, the day pass is if you just want to... uh. Come and browse because there's going to be a bazaar and as well um, stores present and there, uh, um, there's going to be uh, other activities just to browse. Oh, yes, yes. I'm looking at the tournament uh, ticket. It gives you entry to the tournament, entry to the activities in the hall, uh, four rounds of Guild Ball on the Saturday, and swag. I don't know 16th. how it works, but there is also a board game event happening at the same time. Uh, at the same school, so I don't know if your ticket works for both even. I think so. So, if you are into miniature, but also board game, you might have even more stuff you want to do. Oh, that's cool. And, and they are running a bazaar. They have announced that, I yeah. think, today or yesterday. So, you bring your stuff. There is a $2 fee on every sale, but the, that uh, everything goes to the school. It's uh, like a fundraiser for the school, uh, the, the event is. Right. So they will take care of everything. You just have to make your bundle and then surprise, and it will be uh, dealt with. As a two dollars surcharge, yeah, like a listing fee essentially. Yeah, exactly. And it's only That's on stuff reasonable. that you sell, not uh, you don't. It's not a listing fee; it's a selling fee. Yeah, selling fee. Yeah. yeah. And also for the entry fee for the Gilball tournament, lunch is included. Well, that's an excellent value at twenty dollars. So. so people should sign up. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, well, technically, if I'm the event. only person that signs up, does that mean I automatically win best painted and the event? Yes, <laughs> that's about my only chance ever of winning either of those awards. So it's good to know. The board game <laughs> event is called La Foire du Jeu, and it's happening. Uh, yeah, the same weekend, same days. So two for one special. Yep. Go for Guild Ball. Get your board games. That's pretty cool. All right, we're rambling. So, uh, folks, uh, it has been excellent. Is there anything else we want to add about uh, the event before I completely cut everyone off? No. I think we covered everything and we jumped on each other's uh, line, so we were sure to cover everything. Excellent. Okay, well, we'll call that a wrap. Thank you very much for uh, being here, guys. Thanks very much for listening, folks. And uh, we will talk to you again soon. 
Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, geeks. Thanks for listening to Geeks of the North. If you want to contact us, you can email us at geeksofthenorth at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash geeks of the north, or follow us on Twitter at geeks of the north. You can follow me, Paul, at PR Filio, Antoine at Eltonio Berg, Steve at B underscore Steve, and if you really feel the need, I guess you can follow Yo. He's at Yo Masta. Breaks and outro music by Ladrav. You can listen to them at ladrav.bandcamp.com. See you next time, geeks. Thank you for checking out a United Geeks Network family member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find All Us Geeks, a podcast that discusses board games, movies, television, comics, Kickstarter, and many other forms of geek culture. The United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com.